I mean, I think one of the most memorable things that's happened to me is when I was trying to take a picture of a deer and you came across this footage yesterday. I was like sneaking up to it and it like pokes his head up and looks at me and I'm like, like, all right, I gotta get a good shot and then it just charges me and I just let it happen. And yeah, it good. shattered your entire skeleton. Yeah. All right, Red Dead Redemption 2 is finally out. People are all playing it this weekend. Uh, it's a massive game. We are gonna get into a spoiler-free discussion of like our favorite ways to play this game. Jake, I know you kind of like beelined it through the main story. Do you have any like overall helpful tips for people yeah, on how to play it? Don't don't rush it. There are missions, side missions that you that will that you'll get locked out of if you don't do right away or yeah. kind of close to when they unlock. Uh, so I definitely try to shake all the trees you can, see what's, see, see what everything is. I save your life every day I don't kill you. So we are more than even on that front. You'll definitely get distracted here and there, but the story pulled me through the entire way. Like I was partly rushing it just because I wanted to see the end before the game came out and have that knowledge. But at the same time, you know, just like a lot of Rockstar games, that story really keeps you going. Yeah, because I like obviously like in a Rockstar game, you could sit down and play poker or dominoes or whatever for like an hour. Or GTA 5 and 4, you could play darts or whatever. But Lucy, you kind of had that more of that experience than going right through the main story, right? Yeah. So I like didn't want to rush through the story because Red Dead Redemption. I love that game so much, and I've you know as many of us have waited eight years for this. And so I really wanted to savor it, take my time with it. And also it does a thing where it does encourage you to go off the main story path mm -hmm. and just uncover new things. And so I really am enjoying just playing that way and exploring and doing and experiencing as much as I can. Yeah, it's, it's like you'll be riding along a path from like Strawberry, one of the towns, to Valentine. And then all of a sudden you'll hear someone that needs help or gunshots and you'll ride over. And every single time I heard that, I was like, it was, I was helpless. I had to go check it out. Jake, I know again you like beelined it through the story, but did you also like get pulled aside by those kind of like uh, emergent stuff happening in the world that yeah. Rockstar has like peppered throughout? All, all the time, pretty much. Whenever I was riding along anywhere and I saw that little blip, I'd immediately. Like, all right, we're getting off the road here. I want to see what, what yeah. this is about. And there'd always be some sort of like interesting, unique interaction. Even if I didn't get anything out of it, like like material-wise, like if I didn't get ammo or or, or, or uh, money, it was still worth it. Mm -hmm. Like it was still like a neat little interaction that you know adds a lot to the this world. I yeah, think as well. Oh, sorry to cut you off. But no. Like I think as well is because everything has a consequence and everything has an impact. Mm -hmm. Like they take even just a mundane what. Well, we, you traditionally consider a mundane like side mission in an open world game is like going fishing with someone in your camp. There'll be a spin on it. There'll be like a weird thing that happens that turns into a thing that you know we've been coming into the office every day and going, oh, I found this really weird guy like mm -hmm. yeah. naked swimming through the lake or whatever. Like, there's tons yeah. of that, and there's also when you have these random encounters, there's kind of always the knowledge that you might see them again because I've been encountering a bunch of people and helping people out because I'm playing as a good guy and I found them again mm -hmm. and the game is just really clever at doling out rewards like delayed rewards for helping people yeah yeah some of the most impressive moments I think in that game is I'll come across someone I'll interact with them and I'll, I'll just forget about it and then 10 hours later I'll walk up and they'll be like hey I remember you I didn't get your name and they'll ask me for my name and like have a little introduction it's, it's really cool mm. it's really cool hey Wallace, this here's the kind soul I was telling you about. The one that, uh, got the venom out of your leg? <clears throat> mm -hmm. I guess so. Listen, friend. I want to talk about that honor system. Because there's honorable and dishonorable, I guess would be the easiest way to say it. So a white side and a red side to your... Again, it's not morality, but like, Jake, you would kind of explain it as whether... It's like how good of a gang member you are for yeah. what, uh, the Sons of Dutch, your gang. Like, uh, are you... Are we all going kind of good? Or did we all go kind of good? Because I went good as so well. So I went good. Or I went, like, uh, honorable. I'm, it's kind of like, after playing Red Dead Redemption, you know, you've got John who's trying to do the right thing. Yeah. And I've kind of taken that mentality as I'm playing as Arthur. It's like, sure, I've led a bad life, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to do the right thing. And I think I'm really enjoying the game by playing honorably, or trying to, because 
he, like, Arthur will, people will always say, oh, you're such a good person, and he, like, doesn't want to be a good person. He's like, but no, he, I'm not. So I feel like he is, like, to your point, he's exactly the opposite of John Marston, or at least my version of Arthur that I'm playing, because he's like, I'm not a good good person, shut up. And just He wants to appear bad, but I think he is, especially within the context of the gang members, he's one of the better people. Mm -hmm. At least so far, I'm, I'm like 40 hours and I've not gotten anywhere near beating the story. Maybe something bad happens at the end. Uh, I don't know. Jake, don't spoil anything. I'm not going to spoil anything, yeah. but I, my first playthrough, I played very nice. I played like a good Arthur, and now yeah. I'm kind of dipping into the, to the dishonorable side. Yeah. And it is harder. Like, really? if you go up and antagonize someone too much, they'll just be like, all right, you're disturbing the peace. I'm going to go tell the cops. And then they'll run off and you have to like stop the witness. Yeah. And then you'll, I'll, I'll beat them. So they'll be like, don't tell anyone. And then six other people will see and they'll run. <laughs> and it, it just, it gets so out of hand. But yeah. it is pretty entertaining being evil. I'm playing through it as an honorable character, but I really cannot wait to replay it as an outlaw because mm. the game is very, very good at making you feel like an outlaw. Like when yeah. you ride into an, era, into an area and you see there's a bounty on you, you actually kind of get like... You get skittish. Yeah, and I'm, I'm like, I feel like people are watching me because the, the world is very good at reacting to you and responding to you. And yeah. I feel like when you're an outlaw, the, the game like super recognizes that and really makes you feel like one. Like yeah. I, you go into town and I'm like, I should not be here. No one wants me here. Yeah, no I should yeah. clear out. away from sheriffs from the sheriff's office. Sure. I'm like, yeah. Mm, nope. I went into a town when I had a bounty on, and I put my mask on, and everyone's going, "Hey, what you hiding your face <laughs> yeah, for? Yeah. What are you doing?" I was like, eh. I don't see the need for that mask here. If you're playing as a good guy, so the control scheme is, I would say, quite sophisticated. There is a lot that you constantly yeah. have to keep in mind. And if you accidentally like fire your gun mm -hmm. or you accidentally walk your horse over someone, which I do all the time if you're walking around a town, you genuinely feel bad about it. It feels like there's more, like, not punishment is not the word, but it's definitely, when you do stuff wrong, yeah, you the, feel it. The physics and you are feel also more guilty. brutal. Yeah. When you like run someone over, it's like, oh I'm no! So you can hear their bones crack. Yeah. 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 Just leave me on my way. It didn't have to be like this. I just, I love that the the honor system actually makes the world different. Like you had mentioned, apparently there's like hidden stuff that, like with, within that system that makes the weather change. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot like of a little confirmed. things that, that change depending on that, that don't necessarily like happen amongst the people in the game like people like like more than just the people like apparently the weather would change and like Arthur has a journal uh, and yeah. depending on how honorable he is will kind of affect what he draws right uh, like his internal that. thoughts on paper and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool because the journal like we're, the we're talking about the really, best way yeah, yeah. Really like in journal. terms of like there's no right way to play this game but I would heartily recommend reading the journal whenever possible mm -hmm. it gets updated because it's just cool to see Arthur's inner monologue. I do want to talk about how many different HUD options there are because you can almost turn it completely, or you can turn it completely off. Like if you, you can, go yeah. first person, obviously, like I personally don't think first person is the best way to play this game. I think there's so many small details in third person that you see like the way he slings his shotgun over his shoulder and then the way he's holding his rifle when he's got a, like the Max Payne 3 style of weapon holding. You did bring up something that's kind of a useful tip though. You were saying you did first person indoors when you're like yeah. exploring. That mm -hmm. seems like a smart idea. Yeah, there are some missions where you know you have to go through houses or like if it's a, a hideout that you've like you've killed everyone and you just want to go and see if there's any treasure or anything. Yeah. First person makes it a lot easier to get around, but it's still to do in third person. Yeah. I just, yeah, there's, like you said, there's so many cool animations that Arthur himself has that I don't want to lose that mm -hmm. by being in first person. Dear Jeremiah. Speaking of that, I've kind of, like, in terms of hygiene, I've tried to always be, like, clean shaven and, like, like yeah. kind of uh, dapper looking, I guess. But I want to see what it looks like when you just grow out a full beard, hair, mud, dirty. I want to see, like, I know the camp members will react to you if you are too dirty and I want to see that because right now they just keep they, they've said literally they keep calling me a pretty boy in town and stuff and Arthur sometimes gets offended. Come on pretty boy. Pretty boy. You're kidding me. Pretty boy. You can also change the compass or yeah. 
like you know, you can change the minimap uh, into a compass, or you can turn it completely off, and then it only comes up when you tap a button. Mm -hmm. I liked that at first, but then I, I just kept the minimap open the whole time because sometimes when I heard gunshots in the distance, I wouldn't know exactly where they were, and the map would be a flashing blip, and I didn't want to miss anything, so mm. I turned the minimap back on. So I personally kept the normal Rockstar minimap on like the whole game. But I think you, because you were the first one that said like, oh, you could turn it off and then just like manually bring it up. Did you play the whole game like that? No, I, I started to, just for capturing footage, because I thought it looked cleaner without all of that. But you're right, kind of like, when I, when I see like, when I hear something going on and I know there's a blip on the radar, not being able to see that blip is kind of, it makes it tough. So yeah. see, I keep mine off, like, the whole time. But it's if I hear something, that's when I'll just tap down and it pops up for a little bit. Yeah. I'll go to the blip. Yeah, like you said, it's clean it just looks really good and like the game is so beautiful that i just yeah don't want to my i don't want to be constantly focusing on the bottom left hand corner yeah when i first turned it off i was in a cart and with some of the other characters and they changed their dialogue to tell me you know That's go left cool. up here go right go through the trees and go left like it's really cool go left here down the main street i've noticed it's kind of hit or miss though i, I think you brought up that if they're in the middle of like talking about something else mm -hmm. they won't really direct you unless you miss a turning and then they'll go what are you doing you're supposed to turn right back up. yeah yeah, this direction don't no seem right. Turn the wagon around. There is one more thing that I do want to ask you guys about. Cinematic mode, do you guys use that much? Because I found myself using that all the time. Just because if you plot a course on the map and then you go to cinematic mode, uh, Arthur will just like auto mm -hmm. ride, which is super useful. And it looks stunning. I think. It, it's really good looking, but and then also like it confuses me sometimes in a good way because they'll go into an actual rock star yeah. cutscene. Yeah. And I'll be like, wait, why is it not turning yeah. off? I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> It's just transitioned pretty seamlessly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I used it a lot earlier in the game, and then as the game went on, I started not using it just because I kind of enjoyed really controlling my horse. Because mm -hmm. you still can control your horse yeah. in cinematic mode, but this was very much like, I could see myself doing it later in my playthrough as I'm just like, okay, I just want to get to point B in a yeah. really good looking way as opposed to like a more involved way. And it takes ages actually to even get to the point where you can unlock fast travel. So I was doing yeah. it a, a cinematic mode a ton in the beginning, but now I'm just, I'm just enjoying. Fast travel I'm about? No, not even fast travel. I'm just enjoying like walking around and just seeing the sights. Hey. Hey partner. Yeah, in general, like obviously, if this conversation didn't highlight it, there's like a myriad ways to play this game, whether like through the, the HUD, through your role playing as Arthur, whether you're outlaw or like relatively good gang member. But um, I guess that's kind of the beauty of the game. It lets you play exactly how you want and discover it how you want, like go blow through the main story or just like take your time hopelessly getting distracted by every little detail. 